angry and frustrated players for Magic the Gathering are starting to really become vocal, not only about products like Commander Masters sealed product price line, but also the singles market and what happens when a market for singles cards goes to zero, when Wizards of the Coast goes from a collectible trading card game to just a card game with no secondary value, what happens to their box prices then? Let's talk about it, stick around. I wonder if Wizards of the Coast realizes how slippery of a slope they're on right now and if they recognize the danger to the ecosystem for Magic the Gathering. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here and thanks again for hanging out with me on my channel today. A big shout out and thank you to everyone who's been subscribing to the channel. We are getting closer every day to the 20,000 subscriber mark. So remember, if you enjoyed today's content, like and subscribe to the video. Join our conversation here on Magic every day as I do upload daily content each and every day of the week. Love to have more people here talking Magic. So what happens guys? Where do we go? When the box prices are not being accepted, when you're charging, let's just say 350 bucks a box, Canadian, for draft box of Commander Masters, and nobody bites, nobody wants to buy it, because there's reprint cards inside, and although those reprints right now have value, players are starting to question how long that value holds. What happens if they don't need it for competitive play, but only want it for kitchen table magic? It's becoming more evident that the speed and pace in which Wizards of the Coast is reprinting things lends to the argument that you can just sit there for a couple of years keeping a nice little tidy spreadsheet of cards you want and wait for the inevitable next reprint. When cards cycle out and become less popular and Wizards pumps up the reprint volume on that particular card, finally driving the final nail and killing that card off. And it apparently is happening to numerous cards in Magic the Gathering already. Cards that don't see as much play in tournament play tend to get reprinted more often it seems and get killed off. It has a lot of players frustrated and angry. Because the tournament scene for Magic the Gathering, the competitive field for Magic, is of course part of the game. But the majority of players never go to a competitive tournament, never join anything other than maybe a pre-release. So why should that card have massive secondary value when it's going to get reprinted a couple of years from now? Is it the privilege of having that card first and being the first person to play with it at a tournament? Is that the reason to justify the cost of a box? Because if you're going to reprint that card within a very short span of time, then why would you not just wait? Why don't you just wait to have the card reprinted numerous times over to kill the value? Look at what's happened with some of the cards already for Commander Masters, like Doubling Season, already coming out again in Wilds of Odrain. Has a lot of players talking and angry. The emails kind of stacked up a little bit, asking if I would cover this topic. And I said, sure, why not? I did a little research, and it is interesting to take a look at. Now, the card I'm going to share with you is Urza. Now this is the Modern Horizons version and you can see when this card came out, it was very sought after in 2019. It was like 75 bucks at pre-release and then it shifted down. Later on, people started finding uses for it and ways of utilizing the card and it stayed around the 50, 60 dollar mark. It spiked a couple times at 75. And in the last 60 days, look where this card has gone. From Dominaria Remastered already kind of putting a nail in the coffin and then seeing it come around again in Commander Masters in basically the same timetable year, this card has lost anywhere from 70 to 80% of its value. So why would a player be happy to open that card? Why is that card sought after if it has no value left in it? Why should I be excited for any magic card I open? Are you holding on to some Ragavans? You think they're going to hold value? Or do you think Wizards, as they move on, will kill that value? Because that's what's happened to poor Urza. A card that should have had higher value for a number of years is basically an $8 card right now. Very, You can buy it on TCG Player for like 8 bucks. Okay, $10 Canadian to get that card. And if it's not there yet, just wait, because it's going to be even lower than that. When you kill a market for a card, by overprinting the card, Wizards of the Coast is placing no more value on that card. They're moving on to the next thing. They don't care. And that's the problem that they are facing against the players who are looking at a box and saying, should I buy 
This $600 box of Modern Horizons 2 collector box. It's got amazing cards inside. We've got Dakon, we've got Fetchlands. But wait a second. What's the point of buying it for 600 bucks when all the cards inside will get reprinted so many times there's no value? This is the argument a lot of players are really starting to lean on. And more players are starting to look at various ways of looking at products differently. Instead of being a collectible trading card game, it's just a card game. Which means they don't care where they get their game pieces from. Like a chess set with mismatched pieces, they don't care if they all came from the same set. They don't care if they're ivory or plastic. If they're real or proxy. Wizards of the Coast may not recognize the danger yet, but they should. They should understand by pushing players this close to the edge, like many other TCG collectible card games in the past that died off, the secondary market for those cards never held. Magic to date has always had a very strong, healthy secondary market, but in the last couple of years, it's been falling off faster and faster, and the negativity toward that market is getting worse and worse. More and more LGSs are refusing to take cards because they already have them in stock. There's no point in restocking a card if you already have 20 copies on your shelf and no players playing with that card anymore. The pace in which Wizards of the Coast is trying to expand their revenue stream is to the detriment of the actual ecosystem where they gain their nourishment from. By turning players aside and not treating them with the respect they deserve for spending higher price points to buy these collectible cards, not, I mean, guys, they're collectible right now. They still have a secondary market value. If players didn't care about them being collectible and tradable and having secondary market value, everyone would just proxy their cards. So that argument where people have, well, no, it doesn't matter. I want the real card. You can, you don't need the real card to play the game at a kitchen table. And that's what players are getting to. They can just go get the cards on a proxy website, print them directly to their house. Done. Because the cards are holding no secondary market value. There's no point in having the real card if it's going to lose 80 to 90 to 100% of its value. If it's going to go from being a card that was $50 to $20 to $10 to $2 in the space of four or five years. The game never degraded their cards that way. They never brought the values down that fast. And that's what's happening. It's almost like that scenario of pay to play where you can go, like I play Call of Duty, you can go on Call of Duty and I can buy all kinds of fancy guns. I can buy Homelander, Starlight, all these little intro packs by charging me extra money up front. I get all this cool stuff. But if I wait long enough, if I sit in the backdrop long enough, eventually it goes for free, goes for 99 cents when the game's about to you know, roll on to the next game. It's almost like a form of micro transactioning to get you to buy the stuff up front, knowing it's going to lose value over the course of that year and move on to the brand new product so they don't care what happens on that product line anymore. And this is a fallacy they should not be following. And this is why a lot of me and my friends, we don't buy anything on Call of Duty. We see what they were doing years ago. We just sit back. We'll grind out what we can have fun playing. We'll use what we can use because we know every new gun upgrade, every new thing they add, there's always something after it. So you can never keep up with the Joneses that way. And more players are recognizing that. After seeing what they've done with Commander Masters, after Dominator Remastered got like flooded onto the market and everything crashed down, that killed, and I mean killed, the investment portfolio of people who collected sealed boxes. I haven't bought a sealed box since Dominator United. I bought one box for the backgrounds. And there's lots of players like me who used to buy cases of this stuff. So if there's nobody buying sealed and it's sitting at the store level and stores are getting antsy, especially with these price points. And now singles cards are starting to mount up in certain card categories. It's like, oh, I took a trade in of $40. They announced it as a reprint. I'll never be able to sell this card now. The store can't get any value out of it. So what's going to happen? Our store is going to go strictly on trade in. You can trade a card for a card, but you can't actually sell the cards to them anymore. This is something Wizards is not really tuning into, or if they are, they're keeping their head in the sand right now about it, and they're not facing up to the facts of what's going to happen if you don't respect that secondary market. And it doesn't matter if you like it or not. You can be a player right now who just says, Moxman, you're, you're talking out of your you-know-what, this is ridiculous, I'm not following that. These cards should be accessible and playable to everyone, and I agree with you. 
I'm not disagreeing they should be accessible and playable, but the way they treat the reprint market kills off the golden goose that gives them money. In the end, if players don't think there's value in that card game, if they don't believe they should have the real card because it's going to lose so much value, then what's the point? Why should I bother if I know a reprint's going to come along in three or four years making the card a dollar to five bucks? Sure, affordable, great. Or do I just proxy the card? And that's what players are talking about. This is the, the stream of conversation line I'm getting time and again. This was all kinds of emails, private Discord messages to me asking those questions, which means if I'm getting asked 10 questions, another larger YouTube channel is being asked 50 questions like that. It just gets more exponential the more you look at it. You look at the Reddit boards with people having these discussions, you're like, yeah, it's kind of everywhere right now. Wizards of the Coast has kind of irked people. I'm not sure if it's just a temporary thing or a greater problem that will grow bigger with time until they're at like that, that point like they were with the reserve list where they had to create a reserve list to guarantee value to make people come back. If Wizards isn't careful, they're going to head to that exact same point. I'll be curious to think what everyone says here in the comments section. So slam down some comments. Let me know what you think. We know the seal box mark is basically dead right now. But how do you feel things will go if they keep reprinting cards at the pace they're printing at? If players start not recognizing secondary market value at all and decide to go a different route? Guys, this is curious stuff, man. I mean, everyone's got a home printer nowadays. What's going to happen if players just want to play the game and don't care about the value? Guys, I can't wait to read your comments in the comments section. Thanks again for allowing me to entertain you each and every day. Crazy magic conversations, angry, frustrated players but it's still an amazing game to play and I can't wait to play this weekend. So everyone have a great day. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow will probably be the earnings call for Hasbro. I guess we'll get to see how they're doing, but more we get to have that conversation. Wait, you're watching this video tomorrow. That earnings call happened today. I guess I'll probably be doing a video on it for Friday. All right, guys, we'll see what happens then. Have a great day. Hey guys, a big shout out and thank you to all my new patrons who've joined the Patreon here, guys. To all the supporters out there who support this channel each and every day and allow for daily uploaded content. Thanks again to all the patrons and YouTube membership members. I will be updating these back screens as soon as I can. Have a great one. Welcome back to the Ramble Jamble. You made it and there's still coffee in the cup. I know we're doing good today. So the earnings call. Um, this is going to be interesting. I'm going to be looking for that in-between word speak. We know that they did an air big Amazon dump, right? When they did everything from Dominaria Remastered to all those prices, Commander Masters prices being dropped down by all these third party sellers. So we know Lord of the Rings will pick up their sales volumes and their overall revenue, but they're going to have a decrease in some of their areas because they probably didn't sell as much as they thought they were going to on the earlier stuff, right? So I'll be curious to see if there's some in between, you know, special wording about. Uh, having to store product stuff and having to liquidate it and move it out at, at a faster pace than they intended. Because the one thing I've noticed is the metrics I use haven't really shown tighter print runs yet. I know it should be coming by now. Everything I know about this kind of business means if they know they're not selling as much in a tighter market, you would roll back your production runs unless you've got contracts in place that had to guarantee a certain amount. But if that was the case, you think they'd destroy it or something, but who knows? I want to see if they do any wording that mentions that. So I'll let you guys know. We'll have a little talk the following day. It should be interesting stuff. Uh, anyway, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here. Going to enjoy the coffee. Going to go hang out with the mini mocks and make some pizza for him, not me. I'm just, I'm just going to have a salad. And uh, we'll see how it all turns out. So thanks again, guys, for being here. Slam down a Necronomicon inside the comment section if you made it this far. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have an awesome day. Jacked up on Mountain Dew.